Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Kerbal Space Program video in which we will be sending a surface base to the planet Drez, a celestial body that everybody loves to visit and one that most definitely exists no matter how hard you meme themes in the comments will try and deny it. However, I will be the first to admit that Drez may not be the most interesting destination prospect at first glance. I mean, it's a pretty boring looking rock with no atmosphere or any real distinctive features. It pretty much looks like the Moon and feels like the Moon, but requires an exponentially larger amount of fuel to reach due to its relatively high orbit between Juno and Jewel. Now, the whole you know, Drez is boring rhetoric was somewhat rectified when the devs added an asteroid ring around it, but even then it's still not really worth it when it's so easy to capture asteroids from Kerbin's sphere of influence. See my video on capturing a magic asteroid for more information regarding the exact methodology behind this. However, for me personally, Drez is one of the coolest places to visit from a geographical features perspective because it has a very deep and large canyon which is very exciting to traverse to the bottom of. Which brings us to the ship featured in this video. Some of you may recognise it as the base I constructed in a live stream a few days ago. Or is that a week ago now? It's been a couple of weeks ago, I think, by the time this video comes out. Um, but it is the Drez Canyon base with a destination set for the dark depths of said ravine. Down in the bottom of the cavern, sunlight will be very limited, which is why this thing is packing an enormous battery capacity and has lots of RTGs to generate power on its own without the need for solar panels. At some point in a future mission, we can further improve the setup by adding a satellite over the Drez Canyon to relay information from the trench back to Kerbin as the walls of the canyon will likely impede transmission of data. Though of course that doesn't actually happen in KSB, but just from a realism perspective, I think it would be a nice thing to do. Now, the uh, eagle-eyed among you may notice something going amiss right here. You can see the thing starting to shake itself apart, so I kept on hopping into time warp and exiting it, but uh, twas not enough. The thing shook itself to pieces. So we're going to reload this quick save. I'm going to explain exactly why that happened. It's auto strut. Those um, side boosters there with the Aeros bike engines that I'm going to use to land on the planet are auto strutted to the ship. And something about SAS and auto strut causes the game to not like. And so uh, things will start to shake apart. Sometimes you can get around it by deactivating SAS. This is particularly true when you're assembling space stations and have just docked things to the prime module and you know, SAS is being a bit weird, but in general, it's because of auto strut. So just disabling auto strut does fix the problem if you are having such uh, similar difficulties. The worst, the worst time this ever happened to me was in my Moho, Moho base, Mohol base. Well, I guess it's a Moho base on Mohol, on the Mohol. <laughs> I got distracted just then because I was looking at that annotation I added just about the phase angle. We want uh, Drez to be about 82-ish kilometers kilometers degrees ahead of Kerbin you know as if the sun was the midpoint and you were drawing a line from Kerbin to the sun to Drez the angle that line forms is about 80 degrees I just eyeballed it I didn't bother using a calculator which in hindsight I probably should have done if I wanted to get the most accurate mission uh, possible but we have enough fuel and so I didn't really care but because of the abysmal thrust to weight ratio of our nuclear engines even though we have 12 of them uh, we did have to do two burns at periapsis I did try and be a little bit cheeky and <laughs> just do it in one go but uh that didn't work out so we ended up having to do two and the second burn I kind of got a bit overzealous with the time warp and so we ended up burning a little bit later on than we probably should have so again it wasn't the most efficient escape burn from Kerbin but again I don't care <coughs> I broke up a little bit and I I don't care a bit of you know a strong a strong accent that's at the end of that sentence so there goes our apoapsis around the sun now we're not going to get a dress encounter straight away although i got a bit excited because we started getting a, getting a planet encounter at the end of that burn unfortunately it's because i'm on a resident orbit and we're going to just be encountering Kerbin again so it's not a dress encounter sadly but a minimal amount of tweaking less than 200 meters per second is always you know it's always nice when you get a, a burn like that I did overshoot the maneuver note though, so I had to make another one. Uh, but in the end, this one ended up being a little bit cheaper anyway. So, you know, every cloud, every cloud. So uh, we got to the maneuver note, pointing towards the maneuver note and burning to finish the maneuver note. I sense, I sense you guys probably know how to make maneuver notes at this point. And if you aren't at that stage and need a tutorial, don't watch this video. <laughs> oh, certainly if you want to be doing interplanetary missions or doing your, fir your first ever mission to Drez, um, this is not the video to be replicating. Uh, this is, it's a very difficult rocket to fly and you could do a lot better when it comes to tutorials. So, um, j this is a purely artistic video, or I guess if you are at the end game stage, 
uh, and want to do uh, very poor thrust to weight ratio rockets, then I guess this video might be helpful. But I think I mainly made this for the spectacle of just landing what I think is a pretty cool looking base. I ended up getting kind of a retro futurism sort of look, you know, like typical 1950s sci-fi look. Anyway, what am I doing right now? Well, I'm burning retrograde in order to make sure we end up in a captured orbit around Dres rather than, you know, just passing through its sphere of influence and continuing on a kind of solar orbit. Uh, but I, I made a, a couple of mistakes here. The first one is that the periapsis, the initial height of the periapsis was too low. And if you look at the Kerbal Engineer readouts at the top left of the screen, you can see our periapsis height is rapidly dropping and our, um, our orbit is far from fully captured. And you can see that as the orbit swings around to capture, we're ending up we end up on a collision course. So I had to quickly point radial out um, to raise our periapsis, expending the last of our nuclear fuel. So so that's a thing. Uh, we have enough delta V in the landing engine so to do the rest of the circularization burn, as in, you know, just to bring our apoapsis down to be equal to our periapsis height or near enough. Uh, the other mistake I made was just kind of in the similar vein to that, really. I probably should have started burning a little bit later on, like a little bit closer to periapsis rather than so like a like a long time before it probably would have been more helpful to make the maneuver node kind of not end up on a perfectly circular orbit but just you know on a very very elliptical orbit anyway as you can see here we're just doing some quick time acceleration over the planet's surface trying to locate the canyon and i see it's just there on the map screen so we can just locate it there and there it is doesn't look like much at the moment because we're pretty far away from it and i had to do a bit of an awkward zoom zoom out to see it we can just time warp a little bit until our orbit passes directly over it, which we got pretty lucky there. It almost, it perfectly passes over the canyon, which was completely intentional. And that's what I meant to do. I'm just that good at this game. And it certainly wasn't a very happy accident. <laughs> okay, that sounds kind of dirty, doesn't it? A very happy accident. That's not, that isn't the impression. Please don't demonetize my channel, YouTube. <laughs> I have been pretty lucky with demonetization, to be honest. I've not been hit by it myself, but I know some of my contemporaries have my hearts my heart my thoughts and prayers go to them and their families and uh, i do mean that since uh, i don't I don't want to take the mickey it is it's a horrible thing that's been happening to people and I, I i wish i wish them all the best i had an email i'm one of these people apparently whose channel is big enough that youtube feels they can email me about updates and uh, they said that after all the false claims they've made and all the appeals they've kind of used that to work on their ai to help track down so apparently the demonetization thing is slowly improving YouTube themselves admitted that it has got a long way to go, but they are making progress, so it's good to hear the progress is being made. Anyway, we are descending into the canyon, so I kind of was aiming for this sort of darker patch because it's a, it's a flatter area and we need a fairly flat area to land this base, so we couldn't get all the way to the bottom of the canyon, but we can get pretty damn close. So you can see me just steering this thing, trying to get it under control and on a trajectory that puts me somewhere I'm happy with. Luckily, uh, Dress has very low gravity, so it's quite easy to do landings on. Um, it's in terms of kind of delta V required to land on, it falls uh, somewhere in between Ike and the Mun, uh, requiring 430 meters per second to get from the surface to a stable orbit. Obviously, it takes a little bit more from the bottom of the canyon, but not a significant amount. And now we can just detach the peripheral booster engines just to you know improve the aesthetics. And while I took the first two and sort of kamikaze them into the cliffs i thought hey we can use the other two to kind of charter the canyon have a little look around because we're not gonna have many opportunities to view this thing from the air or i guess from the space <laughs> since there is no uh, so here we are going down to the this is the deeper end of the canyon there we go and uh, there goes the aero spike engine and then we can take the other one and go the other way this time towards the canyon entrance uh, now, long-time viewers of this channel, um, we're talking kind of 6,000, 8,000 subscribers, something like that, uh, may remember me going back to this canyon, well, I guess going to this canyon, uh, all the way back in 2015. I sent a rover, uh, I drove it from the very top that we're driving towards now. If I could just stop moving the mouse around now, that would be great. Thank you, Past Matt. And, yep, just throttling up. So we started kind of all the way at the end and we drove the entire length of the canyon all the way to the bottom and I'm still that remains one of my my favorite videos I've made um, it's one of those it's one of the videos I'd really like to remaster in the sense that it looks terrible if you look at any of my videos from 2015 it was before I had a PC I was gaming on a laptop with a GT 640 which is a pretty bad card anyway and it was the mobile version of that card so all in all a pretty terrible card 
and the laptop itself was only recording at 720p and you know and it couldn't render very high quality videos so uh, i'd quite like to render do redo that video now that i have a capable pc but we can just do the overview of the base, which I've kind of already been doing in the background. I hoped the footage could do this talking for me and you could kind of figure out this is the part where I show off bits of the base. Then we go deploying the uh, the drill. We also deployed the scanning tech, science gear, mystery goo, and the communi comms. I was about to say comms, then decided to say communications and end up saying comms. <laughs> and we can get our Kerbal on EVA as well. We have those ladders at the bottom, but they aren't necessary. I kind of added them... Just because I wasn't 100% decided on taking this thing to Dres, um, I, I, you know, you would have doubts about taking something to Dres, let's face it. But I thought, no, I, I would like to visit the Dres Canyon again. And now we have a base here, it would be even more, all the more reason to take a rover down and re-trip down memory lane. Not not quite literally, but pretty damn close to literally. So, our, our dear Kerbal here, whose name has completely escaped me, um would like to have a view inside that observation module looking down into the dark depths of the canyon below. So here he is, his little view here, and I think he's got a pretty good view. There we go. So you can see we are we are pretty darn and deep into this into the into Dres. That's uh let's not dwell on that sentence too much longer. There's a lovely, lovely little sh little shot of him. Looking out, that's not a mod by the way, it's built into the game, if people wanted to know, and uh, how you get the see-through windows. And here's a nice little zoom down to give you a good sense of scale of just how enormous this canyon is. As far as geographical features go, not many things come close. The mohole is the obvious analogue. Uh, Eve and the Mun also have some pretty, um, pretty crazy mountain ranges as well. But no, I like the Dress Canyon. And... I hope you liked this video, and if you did like it and want some more, well, there are, there are some links on screen now. Uh, the top left will take you to a playlist of all the other space stations and surface bases I've built. The top right was chosen by YouTube's bot based on your viewing habits, and bottom right will take you to just my most recent upload, whatever that may be. So other than that, Twitter, Patreon, Discord, all in the description, and have an excellent day.